Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 20 for July 1st, 2023. This is part two. Uh, be sure to check out part one if you didn't see it. And remember, these videos that we're watching today are all suggested by channel members. So thank you to the channel members who suggested these great videos to watch or the not so great videos to laugh at. Um, remember, ultra members get their videos watched for sure. Standard members get put into a shuffle playlist so everyone has equal opportunity to be watched every week. And the memberships are the best way to support this channel simply because, uh, you know, I don't really make any money on these videos. They all end up getting claimed on YouTube, all right? So let's continue now with our ultra member suggestions. Let's see what we got next. <clears throat> Oh boy! So all right, you knew you knew it. this was coming. So last week, someone suggested this guy Vosh, who I guess people are saying is a liberal commentator, and what he does is he comments on political stuff on the internet. And you know, basically, what I said was I didn't necessarily disagree with anything he was saying, but I felt that the way he came across was very offensive. Like, he was taking the guy who was saying things that he felt were politically wrong, but he was just, like, completely insulting the guy up, up, down, left, and right. And I'm like, I feel like you could express yourself better, especially if you're talking about politics. The last thing you want to do is be so insulting. You want to try to make your point in a rational way, be taken seriously. I didn't really think that he was doing that, all right? So now, of course, here we go. Someone else is submitting a video. I don't know if we'll watch the whole thing, but let's at least see what this one's about. It says, a viral pro-segregation TikTok. Okay. Well, I'm about to. Say, we're, I have a feeling we're going to get some really hot takes on this one. So let's get ready for the inevitable cancellation. Okay. Oh. Integration was not the answer. Quite frankly, I think integration was one of the worst things to happen to the black community. I can't wait to be accused of being a white guy talking over a black woman. Let's go. Just being real, because it wasn't even true integration. It was just desegregation when the same thing. Integration should have been dismantling both the black and white structures and creating a new structure, integrating two different things into one. Instead, what really happened was they just took down the whites only signs and just put us in their spaces. Not the same thing. And quite frankly, you know, racism and violence aside, segregation didn't sound that bad. Because the idea of an all-black school, all-black pool, all-black movie theater, all-black restaurants, that doesn't sound bad to me. I truly believe the fight was more so for equality of resources, but I don't think we was trying to sit with y'all to sing Kumbaya, but that's just me. We've watched the full TikTok. I don't know how to skip ahead of and go back on TikTok, <laughs> so we're gonna... We're going to rewatch it, and now we're going to pause. Now that we've seen the whole argument, okay? We're going to say some very heated stuff. Let's get ready. That you'll get a lot of hate for if you say it out loud. Integration was not the answer. Quite frankly, okay. I think again. integration was one of the worst things to happen to the black community. Just being real. Because it wasn't even Why are we watching it again? I just fucking it watched it. Is he going to say anything, or are we watching it when again? The same thing. Okay. Integration should... Can we skip ahead? Is he going to say something? preserve the same power structures all we did is just well desegregate them that's true you know it doesn't stop becoming a white supremacist society just because everybody is allowed to be in every part of the white supremacist society that's true instead what really happened was they just took down the whites only signs and just put us in their spaces not the same thing so this is true this is a correct and fair criticism okay now uh i hope we all enjoyed being at the good part of the TikTok. <laughs> and quite frankly, you know, racism and violence aside, segregation didn't sound that bad. So here's the problem. Racism and violence comes part and parcel with segregation, motherfucker. You're not getting out of it, okay? What does that mean exactly? Like, you know, if you ignore all the things that are inherent to segregation, then, you know, segregation wasn't that bad, you know? If you ignore all the bad parts of concentration camps, like the starvation, <laughs> the disease, the deprivation, the lack of access to resources, the guards, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then it's really just like, whatever, it's like a summer camp, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? So the reason why segregated societies are inherently bad is because when you separate people by... So there are a couple of reasons for it. So here are some reasons. Let's say well, we can... Well, okay, before he gets to his reasons, all right? The, the 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 argument here is oh segregation wasn't that bad but actually in reality take a look at the segregation so you had the whites only part and the blacks only part 
the whites only part was nice. It was ritzy, right? It was clean. It was well kept. It was high end. It was everything was nice. And then the blacks only part would be like the low end shitty stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's not equal. If it was segregated and everything was equal and people actively chose, I want to be segregated because I want to be with a different cultural group of people, that would be one thing. But that's not what it was. It was forced segregation and it wasn't equal. If it were equal, there would be no, probably no one would have complained right but that was the thing it wasn't equal it's like oh the white people got all the good stuff on this side and the black people were getting the short end of the stick and that's why it was bad magically snap all racism and violence out of the world like systemic violence you know would segregation still be bad well yeah and here are the reasons why first and foremost okay when you tell people that the reason they are where they are and the reason they're with the people they're with is because they share an ethnicity, you inherently reinforce tribalistic mechanisms that lead to the promotion of more racism. That's why the least racist parts of America are big cities with wide urban populations that have a lot of racial and ethnic diversity. The more you're exposed to different people, the less intolerant you're going to be. But the more ignorant you are of other people, the more intolerant you're gonna be. Now, it may be true that we live in a hmm. white supremacist society. That is the case. But that does not mean that black people cannot be racially prejudiced themselves. And in fact, quite a lot of them are. There are a lot of black couples who, like, uh, don't want their kids dating white people or whatever. That is racism, and that is bad. And I'm not going to defend that for a goddamn second. I don't care. Oh, no, he's canceled. You can't say that. You can't say that. In modern society, you cannot say that. How dare you say that that is racism? That is you're absolutely canceled for saying that statement. Um, I guess it does kind of make sense. If you, your whole life, are kept to one cultural group, <clears throat> right? And everything you know is only from that one cultural group. And you have no experience or exposure to other cultural groups. You tend to always think that what you're doing is right and what everyone else is doing is wrong. And it's not even just about culture. It could be religion too. Like if you're growing up in one particular religion and you're always told what your belief is correct then you're just going to innately think everything else is wrong. Because it's weird. It's different. It's not what I do. It's, and he's like, it creates a tribalistic mentality in a big city where it's a melting pot and everyone is together, mixed together. <clears throat> you don't necessarily see tribalism because everything is already integrated together. You don't see the difference. You don't see, oh, this is, this is what I've always known because you've seen everything, you know, at face value, right? Hmm. Interesting. Whether or not the society they live in is biased against them. It's still wrong to tell your kids what race they should be allowed to marry. And you know where that attitude is most common? In uh, parts of the South where there are large, large black populations that live in comparatively rural areas. And likewise, where are the most racist parts of the United States amongst white people? Exact same place. Rural areas with very little contact to other ethnic or racial groups segregation inherently creates bigotry and bigotry inherently creates violence because let me tell you this mm, you I don't necessarily agree with that I don't think that it's the segregation that creates the bigotry I think it's I think it's how can I say it? again if you are only exposed to one thing and you actively don't realize that there's other things out there then all of a sudden you start thinking it's my my line of this of 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 thinking or my way of life and nothing else <clears throat> when i was younger all right and i was growing up i was raised roman catholic i was told in the roman catholic church we are correct i'm not kidding you for those who have not been roman catholic and you don't know this when you're being taught catholicism you're outright told this is correct this is right. This is what is the right religion. You're in the right place. Everyone else out there is wrong. Now, you're not told, oh, because they're all wrong, go fight them, go beat them up, go kill them, go oppress them. You're just told you're right and they're wrong. Okay? So when you're told that, as part of your upbringing, you outright have this air of almost like elitism. Like you're smarter than everyone else because you are you believe the right thing and everyone else is wrong. Okay? Okay? Then when I started to grow up and become more mature, and I went to college, I was exposed to a class, I've talked about this before, where it was actually a priest, an actual Jesuit priest was teaching the class. 
And he says, this is a religions class, world religions. It's not just about Catholicism or the Jesuit religion. This is about other religions as well. And as we started to study these other religions, we realized almost all religions had a core system of beliefs and tenets that were almost identical, almost identical. Really what, does, what, what changed between religions were the stories behind them. Who's God, who are the religious figures in that, in that belief system, and also the laws and dogmas that came out of it. So as a, as a result of us believing this, you can or cannot slaughter this, this, this animal. You, do, you can work on this day, but you can't work on this day. Those were the things that were the differences. But the core beliefs were almost the same. And I'm not talking one or two. This was like 10 different religions we studied. And we outlined it. We're like, yeah, it's almost all, you know, treat others how you want to be treated. Don't kill people unless it's for good reason, like self-defense. You know, there's all these different things that they're all the same. So then why is it that every, every religion is told you're the right one? When you all believe the same shit, right? So what's happening here, and we talk about the segregation, I think what happens is when you get segregated and you're only told one th one belief system, one culture, sadly then somehow it becomes a part of that system to be told you're correct, everyone else is wrong. We just took that one part out that maybe we wouldn't have these these groups who are at each other's throats and say, we're better than you, we you know, you're you know, you're lower than us, you know, it's messed up. For for me, I don't know, it was really weird for me. Cause when I was growing up, all the schools I went to were fully like integrated every race every every culture was there right i there were whites there were asians of all different denominations of asia you know you know indians but also you know chinese japanese all were in there and you know blacks hispanics it was all a huge melting pot mix when i went to school so as when i grew up i never thought oh well my people are the white people i never even thought that way because everyone around me was different i grew up playing competitive street fighter Literally, everyone in the arcades was different. There were white people, Hispanics, black people, Asians. Everyone was mixed. So it was, everyone was accepted, right? So I never grew up in a mentality where this race is right, this race is wrong, and I want to be segregated with my own race. I felt the opposite. I'd rather be among everyone else, right? But it's weird because I have relatives who grew up in a 100% white neighborhood, a 100% white segregated group, and to them, it's like, well, yeah, you see, that group was always the bad group. They were the ones that were always involved in the crime and this and that. And so I hear that talk and I'm like, you know, it drives me nuts because I grew up in a situation that wasn't like that, where everyone was mixed. And to see that people have that mentality just because it's based on the skin color, they believe that. I'm not saying that there's not places in the world or places in the country where crime is high and it's a certain ethnic group that's participating in crime more, that there's statistics on that. I'm not here to debate that fact or, or, or you know, disprove anything either. I'm just saying I do feel like this whole segregation thing where I don't think innately it's the segregation that causes that mentality that we're better and they're worse or they're they're foreign and we're familiar and therefore they're bad. You know what I mean? I think it's more of somehow this this weird feeling gets ingrained in in the even we said it wasn't just race, it was religion too for me. Religion was a big thing growing up, being told, You're the right religion, everyone else is wrong. And then I grew up and I was like, No, actually that's not the case. That's kind of messed up to have that mentality. Why do you think you're so much better than everyone else? Because you're of a certain religion, right? But anyway, I don't think we're gonna be really gonna be going too far. Let's see what else he has to say. I want to get to another video now, but cut America down the middle, black half, white half. Here's a question for you: How long do you think it would take? How many generations before a white America, born and raised to believe they are fundamentally different from the black America, thinks they would rather have access to all of your resources? You, how long do you think that's gonna take? Or vice versa. Okay. It's not. Really? I mean, he's saying. He's saying. <clears throat> he's saying what he thinks would happen today, but ultimately, that's what would just happen with any group. Really think about that. All right. Because you are guaranteeing racial bias in a society which is ethnically homogenous. It would not take long. Maybe generation one just thinks, oh yeah, we're just doing this because we have different culture, man. Generation two does it because they think their culture is better. And generation three does it because they think their race is superior. If it even takes that long, by the way. And then, there comes the violence, baby. Yeah, but the question is why? And the question is how does it happen? And the question is how do we stop it, right? 
Not necessarily. See, because again, it's like, well, the only way to stop it is to fully integrate. Is it? Or do we just stop the stupidity? Hey, fucker. Hey, dumbass. You're not better than anyone else. Just because you're living with people of the same ethnicity doesn't mean your ethnicity's better. Stop with the bullshit. Why does no one stop the bullshit? Instead, <laughs> you know? Like, obviously, that's stupid. You know? I don't know. All right. We're going to stop watching this because people are complaining it's too political. But we, we talked about it for like 10 minutes. All right. Let's continue. Oh, I've seen videos like this before. So, ridiculously old food that was rationed for people in the military, and they, they're opening it now to see what it looks like. Ugh. This is what they had to eat. They had to eat this stuff is the that meal was combat packaged. individual, or a lot of guys just simply dubbed the C ration, in service from 1959 to 1980 before being replaced by the meal ready to eat or MRE. This thing had a 21 year service time, which is a pretty good length for any military ration. From 1959 to 1971, oh, no. they had cigarettes so in the accessory packets. Now we're going to check this one out. This one has cigarettes. So it was made from 1971 or before. We'll find out the year because a lot of times these cans have lock codes. Check out the old school spoon there. And here's the accessory packet. Check that out. Cigar Cigarettes matches chewing gum, toilet paper, instant coffee, a creamer substitute, sugar, salt, and I can't read the thing that says at the bottom. Cigarettes matches chewing gum, toilet paper, coffee, instant, cream substitute, sugar, salt, and a interdental stimulator. Package by What the hell's an interdental stimulator? Now, I'm not sure of the year yet, but we're going to find out on one of these cans. Oh boy, a B2 unit that looks to be bulging slightly. All right, this one here. It's from January 1969. Wow. Boy, that was like right at the peak of action during the Vietnam War. So this is definitely a Vietnam War ration, that's for sure. Ooh, look at that black tar. Like, it definitely either is leakage from another can or from this. Oh, gosh. Spaghetti with ground meat. It's not even like they tell you what meat. I guess they do. Beef. Beef. It says beef. But why do they say with ground meat? Why not ground beef? Oh, I don't know. It's always that mystery. Packed by Tony Downs Food Company, St. James, Minnesota. Nice. So, listen to that. Ugh, gosh. It sounds like a rock. Like, know. all the liquid's like, gone. It leaked out. <laughs> all right, let's uh, see what else is in here. First off, get a good look at the inside of that box. You see, they have it separated with these cardboard parts here so these uh, cans can have slight protection there's not much to it oh, that's an interesting lock code check that out this is a pecan cake pecan roll. cake roll oh that yummy are gonna be rancid oh that's gonna be nice boy. and fresh yeah you know nuts usually don't hold up in a ration anywhere past probably 10 to 15 years so with this ration being about 47 years old i can almost guarantee this pecan cake roll is no good because those nuts are gonna be rancid <laughs> so there you go pretty simple oh boy ration. i mean this b2 unit probably has a cheese spread in there i can always tell because of this bulge i mean like the cheese spread's gonna be like ghastly at the very least well that's looking pretty good let's get that out on a tray nice all right, so first off, we're going to bust out that P-38 oh, can boy. over there. Check this, this thing out. This is what they had to open it with, Super this handy. thing? Probably already seen it. What I love about these things is you can always count on them. I've never had a malfunction with a P-38. So let's check out that spaghetti for starters. This always is how they these did it? The bottom, because you know what? You want to wash these cans out and save them. You don't throw away that history. You preserve it by opening it. Before it bulges oh and turns God. into rust. Do you imagine the smell, right? Can you imagine oh, the man, smell? I can smell that <sighs> sauce. I'm surprised the tomato sauce didn't eat through this can already. Oh, man. Ugh, oh! Look at that. Oh, it's so acidic and sour. Oh, 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 ooh, yeah, there we go. Hey, look at that. Very little. Check that out. I don't think there's any rust in that can. You don't see that every day. Usually the tomato sauce will um, eat through the can. 
That was a, that's yeah, supposed to be spaghetti with tomato sauce, by the way, just for the the record. <laughs> that one. There. Uh. Wrap another P thirty eight. Oh, brother. All right, we're gonna bust into that in a sec. Can you imagine the smell? Too. Face this one away. Yeah, there's a reason. Oh man. I just, oh, what is that? Oh no! Let's get to it here. No turning back now. He's having a hard time with it. Look, he's having a real hard time opening it. Oh no. Oh, that's, I, I can smell cheese. Oh no, what am I getting myself into here? Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's in my room and it's just awful. Oh, oh man. Like, oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Those, those, uh, crackers. Crackers? First off, I'll show you the crackers. They're all soft. They're going to be like, right, they're dark. Okay. They're not supposed to be that dark. And they're probably going to be like soggy. Yeah, they feel soggy. Oh, man. Oh. <sighs> Why do I do this sometimes? I just wonder. So it's a oh, it's yeah. a cheese spread for the crackers. Cheese spread type two. Oh no. Ugh. Type one wasn't bad enough. <sighs> SD Charger said this why? is where they were using Look real metal instead of aluminum, they like they use for burst. all cans now. They use hard metal, which is why it's so hard to get it open. It just doesn't hold up. Oh no. Alright. You know what? I feel like I need to wear a mask. <laughs> okay, that's way better. You know, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Oh, no. Put on a full gas mask. <sighs> you know, he's bulged. Looks rooms like Psycho here. Mantis. It's like really hard to get past that. I'm like one millimeter at a time here. This is the nastiest smell. He can't get I'm it open. You. I smell some things. <sighs> There's just something about this that takes the cake. Um, gnarly. I wonder what the difference between spread type 2 and spread type 1 and still smell that even with the mask. Yeah! I do. Some cans are better left unopened. Yeah. Suspiricato. Come on, thing. This thing definitely has black mold in it, my guess. Alright. The verdict. Oh yeah, there you go. That is pure mold in there. Look at that. I can smell that through the mask. Okay, you know what? Insane dark mold. This is gonna be the death of me one day. All right. This goes in the trash. That's the last time I open up another cheese spread. My room stinks. Ugh. And I mean bad. I went and took the mask off. I must be... Uh, you know what? These crackers probably smell like it. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I gotta smoke a cigarette just to get the bad smell of the cheese I wouldn't be out. doing. I wouldn't be doing this in my smell. fucking house. Like, I'd have a, a separate place I'd do it. Rent, rent somewhere to do this. Because you don't want your house thinking like this after the fact, right? Like, oh my god, dude. You know that's bad. All right. I want to see the pecan let's roll now. Oh, you guys doing let's, it. Let's the pecan, pecan roll. Cake roll. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Oh, let's. Hmm. Hey, that kind of smells nice. You know, to cover up the smell of cheese spread from 47 <laughs> years ago that's gone foul long ago, you. Open up a pecan cake roll with <laughs> and nuts and I just want to see what it looks like, then we're moving on because this is going long and it's grossing me out. Ugh. Oh, man. I'd rather eat an old lime green jelly bar <laughs> than open up another one of those cheese spreads. That's it. That's it. Unless I open up outside next time. Where do we get this from? Sorry, right? Where do you buy it from? Alright. Ooh, it still has these. Now this smells like nice, pleasant cinnamon and rancid nuts. Mmm. Which I find to be quite the relief compared to uh, 
Uh, right, yeah. Yeah. Come on now. All right, let's get out with the spoon. This isn't gonna be a 100% smooth extraction, but you know what? I gotta get oh it my out. God! Look, it's like a rock. Dang. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't cool. Yeah, I can see the nuts are real dark in there. They're definitely rancid. I could smell it too. There's a specific kind of smell to it. It smells like fruit. It's like it smells like a dark, like raisiny kind of fruit with then like this pungent other thing that's out. going on that I can't describe at all. Other than it smells like rancid nuts. Yeah, this thing's totally stuck. And I mean geez, like, rock. It, like swelled in there. Alright. Oh. Here, let's see if this makes a difference. Whoops. He's all greasy and stuff. Alright. Hate to do it to the top, but you know, sometimes you have to. Come on. It will not come out. You know, it's just not coming out. It's not coming out. It's totally stuck in there. And that's that. It's just not happening. Couldn't you just take the top just off and push it through? Get this thing out of the can, okay? It's just a little circular roll. <laughs> I can't get it out of the can. If I were going to eat this thing, if the nuts weren't rancid in it and completely disgusting from probably 20 years ago, I would just eat it with a spoon straight out of there. That's how I'd do it. If it were stuck back then, which I can imagine it wouldn't be stuck if it weren't so swelled and... Thank you, SD Chargers, for becoming expanded. a member. I appreciate that. Right. Ooh. Right, we're going to see the spaghetti. Bon appetit. Oh, yummy. Oh. Yeah. There's just something about all this that just never ceases to... It. Oh. You know what? That's a lot of weird-looking spaghetti. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just so you got to wonder, <clears throat> did this ever look like tomato? Because he said this is supposed to be spaghetti and tomato sauce. Did that ever look like tomato? Obviously, that looks like cheese, but it could be because the, the tomato sauce is so rancid. It, it got, you know, mold and shit on it. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> Let's watch one more video before we split the part. <clears throat> Devil. Is he... You, you live around here, boy? No. Where you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pavel? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form identification on you? No, man. What's your name? Robert Jones. Robert Jones? Uh-huh. Why am I supposed to be on the track? No, that's not the problem right now. Where you, what's your address? It's 2006. I don't have address. I'm at the hotel. <coughs> We're working on uh, houses and stuff like that. Roofing. Roofing? Yep. Okay. For my brother. All right. Oh. <sighs> uh, <coughs> what is? We got an escapee. Oh, shit. <laughs> Where from? Uh, a prison. There's a prison here? Yeah. Huh. Man, it is hot. Hey, this call. Subject wear glasses? Nothing about glasses. Can you find out? I'm out with a white male on the tracks at uh, Gilly Williams. You can call my little brother. <laughs> what about? Take your glove off. <laughs> Any tattoos or anything? Flip uh -huh. it over. No, no, I'm just. No, nah, he's clean. Oh, I know that. Jesus. I'm 50 years old. <laughs> how old is your guy? You're how old? 50. I was born in 56. He was born in 56. What the. So. Prison escapee convinces a cop he's actually a jogger. 39 million views. Wow, this video is super old. 16 years ago, right? Well, here's the thing. Like, why do they have all this wrong information about him? 
Like, you hear what he said. He says, does he have glasses? No. Well, this guy has glasses. Are they fake? Don't know. Uh, the information says he has a tattoo on his hand. He takes the glove off. There's no tattoo. So where's the tattoo? Like, why do they have information that says the escapee has a tattoo if he doesn't have a tattoo? <laughs> it sounds like they have all, like, wrong information or something about the guy, right? 58. Uh, any kind of details you can give me, huh? They have no details on the guy they're trying to catch, so how are they going to catch him? Uh, what eyes you got? Green? Well, kind of a turquoise blue. Turquoise blue? Yeah. <laughs> you want to give me some more? <laughs> <laughs> Call my little brother, man. <laughs> Do I? What the fuck? No, really, it's 2006. It's not, this is not like 1986. It's 2006. They couldn't send the fucking guy a picture of the escapee he's trying to catch? What the fuck? There was internet. You could have emailed, you could have sent a picture, and you could have had it so he knows who he's trying to catch. Like, they, they gave the cops no information, but they're going to catch the escapee? What are you, fucking stupid? No, it's not. <laughs> Listen, he's joking on the phone because he's like, how am I supposed to catch this fucking guy? You're not telling me anything about him. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's doing exactly what he needs to not get caught. He's just acting nonchalant. Hey, I'll just wait until I get free because I know it's not me. Right? He's doing everything he should to be released. Yeah. He's very smart. Oh. Um. No, no, it's, uh, short, short hair. My guy's got skin cut hair. He's got a beard, well, a uh, goatee like. How old is that picture? <laughs> See, he's laughing. Girl just told him we have like a five year old picture that you're going off of to try to catch the guy who just escaped. They don't even know what the fuck he looks yeah, like. Yeah, I know, now. I got the same thing. You can't see shit on it. Yeah, see? Wow. Gee, I wonder why they couldn't catch this guy. What a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> That's <laughs> Canadian Kirk says the real life Chief Wiggum. Except I don't blame the cop. I don't blame the cop. I blame the whole system is stupid. You have prisoners who escape and you have no record of what they look like or any discerning characteristics about them. Right? So they don't know the length of his hair. They don't know if he has a beard right now. They don't know about the tattoos on his body. They don't know anything about the guy. So how the fuck are you going to catch him? Do you have no records of who's in your prison? I mean, and what happens at the end? Let's go to the end. Here's some ID with you. See, I don't... In I'm sorry. When I was in the military, we never carried our ID yeah. on base and stuff. So. Our base is different. Yeah, know. You know, they assure you if you can cross on, you, you got something. Yep. But out here, you're in civilian life, you know. Were you in the military? No, I wasn't. I'm retired army. But, um, yeah, in the future, if you're going to jog again, that way, I mean, if you get run over by a train, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to start second-guessing who he is, you can know. Can you write down your uh, phone number, your cell phone number, so I can have whoever calls you? Just call. You got a cell phone with you? No, hell no. I don't even have a cell phone or anything. Just call 911. That's all you got to do, and they'll get a hold to us. All right. That's hey, our quick line there. Have a good day now. Be careful, buddy. Wow. All right. That doesn't make sense at all to me. How the hell... Does someone escape and no one knows anything about the prisoner to cash him? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's part two of DSP vs. the Internet. I hope you guys are enjoying. Thanks for watching this week. And uh, we're going to move on to part three. Thanks a lot and see you in a bit.